Hey guys, it's Drew with Huge Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about what do we do personally when there's no coin shows going on. Let's get this video started. So when there's no coin shows going on, you have to start to get resourceful. You have to start reaching out to your base and connecting with them. And it was kind of like an analogy that we heard recently that was when the good times or the things that are happening and people want you there and people want you to spend money, uh, that's very easy for a lot of dealers to do. But when it's sometimes slow and there's not a lot of coin shows happening or there's a lot of, not a lot of things posted online, you have to start saying, well, I might not make a thousand or two thousand dollars like I want to today. I could start going out there though and making three hundred dollars here, two hundred dollars there, a hundred dollars there. How many times can I do that in a day to where you know our business is not only moving forward, but we know how to handle coins and know how to buy coins when things are a little bit slower? And so what we did yesterday was we drove about four hours to East Texas. And we sat down with one of our dealer friends early in the morning. We ended up going through his inventory, he had a few new things, and we ended up buying those things. And then we sat down, ate some lunch with him, talked with him, and it was a really good time. And then when we got in the car, we ended up you know, calling our next dealer friend. He was about an hour away from him, and we started driving to his house. And when we drove to his house, we ended up selling him four $20 gold pieces. And that really covered our expenses for the whole day. It started off... A little bit strong because you know when you're buying stuff you're not really making a sale but when you made that sale it's really good and then he sat there and he said hey I bought something from you let's see if you can buy something from me and so we ended up buying uh, you know about 10 or 12 coins from him and overall the day was very successful so you sell those coins you get the money back and then what do you do with that money you go find coins that your collectors on your website or people that you meet at shows would really like so those $20 gold pieces weren't being picked up. People didn't like them that much. They may have been priced too high, yada, yada, yada. We got that money back, and then the dealer wanted us to buy some stuff from him. And so we ended up picking up about 25 coins yesterday, all for you guys on AcousiaCollectibles.com. And so a big recommendation for you as a coin dealer, it's easy to be busy as a coin dealer. It's easy to have things going. Everyone's exchanging money all the time. There's so many shows going on, it's easy that way to make some money. But sometimes it's a little slower. And the coin dealers that end up doing the best learn how to not only go fast, but they also know how to move when it's slow. And so that's what I would recommend for you as someone that's wanting to become a coin dealer, or at least someone that's wanting to become a vest pocket dealer, like a lot of people are right now. And so let's show you guys these 25 coins. We hope you guys enjoy them. All right, guys, the first coin, which is the most interesting holder of this whole adventure, is this 1987 W $5 Constitutional Commemorative Gold Piece. It's in the original photo cert from the 80s. You can see that it has the obverse and the reverse as photos, just so you can verify the coin that you were going to send in was legitimate. So, so I guess this is kind of the authentication that they had back then. And this is the collector value that they had for all their members. And they graded it mint state 70. Pretty neat stuff on the back, but not going to read it all today. Second coin, or group of coins we're going to show you, are some just 38D buffaloes. Stuff that you know takes up space on the website, gets people excited to buy a buffalo nickel. All pretty strong strikes, no big issues on these coins. Not really sending coins in that are common for gold cacks right now. Just letting them go up as they are. Next coin is this 1852 braided large scent. Really hard to pick up on this camera. Nonetheless, it's a tough coin. It's in mint state, it's brown. Has a few distracting spots on it, but for the price point of this coin, it's not too bad. It's pretty original. Just was housed somewhere for a little, for a little long and it turned all the way to brown. And uh, most of the time, people that collect braided scent, large scents or they collect wheat scents, a lot of them want their coins to turn brown just because they're going to turn anyway most times in the holder or if they you know keep it in a hot area. This 1893 Morgan dollar, great XF40, just a nice looking coin, mostly original. And uh, don't want to buy coins that don't look original, especially for the wrong price. This one met the right price point, 
and it really had a nice look to it. Next coin is this uh, 1867 Indian head scent. Copper is really hard to pick up on this camera, so I apologize in the meantime. So when you're buying this coin, it seems like just an entry level XF is like 200 bucks, and then when you get up to mint state, it it becomes you know a little bit more expensive. So most of the time, I just try to shoot for mint state on these type of coins where the spread on XF to AU is very low, and then it's pretty still it's still pretty affordable um, up in this grade range. Then we have some just neat looking mercury dimes, 66, 36. Then we have two proof Washington quarters. Nice cameo look to the coins. They're a little scuffed up, but they are CDC approved. And these end up selling really well for us just because there's a lot of people that like to collect and maybe stack proofs like this because they're always you know collectible and they have a rather low mintage. Not as much as the early proofs are, but still nice, great, affordable price point. Here's a big coin from yesterday. It's an 1879 seated quarter grade mint state 66 plus. Really nice flashy coin. And just love the luster of it. A lot of the you know seated quarters that we do end up buying are XF or AU and they just don't have that nice eye appeal look where it's like just a blazer. And the next few coins are these 1862 Franklins. So they look really nice, had a nice cameo look to these two Franklins. That's why I bought them. And the last one doesn't have a crazy cameo look to it. But, you know, if you can make a few hundred dollars in a day and then bring these home and make five or ten dollars on these, it's just, you know, cherry on top most times. Here's a key date that most people don't find in this grade. And that's why we bought it. It's a 21S in VF30. So you can buy one in fine. You can buy one in VG. But when they start getting up to very fine, extra fine, they get really expensive. And most of the time, people just want a little more meat on the bone. And this one definitely is a nice mid-grade, but it does get pretty crazy in terms of price. Then we have this 1864, I'm sorry, 1964 Accented Hair Kennedy Half Dollar. Had a nice little, uh, you know, black and white to it. Definitely not a cameo. If, if the devices here were a little bit more white I would say it would be a cameo but still a nice dark fields nothing distracting about the coin then we have this 1938 mercury dime with a little bit of toning on both sides of the coin CC approved from the Teak family collection I guess it has just a common pedigree nothing that's too crazy about that one then we have this 1875 S Trade dollar, it's great AU50. Not the most original looking coin, but it is a nice hole filler. Especially when the ones that are selling, that are CEC approved, are selling for 800 bucks or 700 bucks. And the ones that aren't are selling for around 500 to 550. Then we have this gorgeous 1922D piece dollar, great mid state 65. It's CEC approved. It's in the old GH holder. I had to pay up for this coin, but it's just a stunner. Love to look at it every time I see it. It just really has that pop to it. Then we have this 1921 Lincoln Scent. It's red mint state 63 red brown. Definitely a red brown. It's got a little scuffiness on the holder, but that's okay. People do like to stack these or at least make a, a date set. Then we have this 1832 Cat Bust Half. Mostly original looking. It's large letters. It also has this huge die crack right here on the back. I think it's Overton 101A for all those Overton guys out there. Just a neat looking coin for sure. Then we have this 1879S Morgan Dollar, Ray Mint State 67. Super flashy, rather clean cheek. And uh, just a really nice Morgan Dollar under $1,000. Then we have a little bit of an early type coin here, 1806, Drape Bust Half, Great VG10. This is the pointed six, as you can see. When you flip it over, it has a really nice looking reverse also. And the last coin I want to show you, which is a coin we sold 
basically leaving the driveway of one of the dealer's houses was this 1798 Drape Best Dime, graded fine 12 by PCGS. Not the highest grade, but the detail and the originality is all there. I hope you guys enjoy what we had to show you guys today. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on the coins we showed today and also the tip that we had. Are there other ways that you guys make money in coins sometimes when things are slower or not moving as fast or there's not many shows? Let us know down below and make sure to subscribe for more videos. We're coming out with them every single week. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.